Yo, YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Salvation Lee. We're back with our video, guys. And today, man, we're doing the Gun Runner team setups. Finally, it was a little bit delayed, a little bit behind. I probably should have done this a little bit ago, but we're finally getting to it now. Team setups for search and destroy. We're going through some defensive setups, some offensive setups, and then some like bomb plant setups. If you get the bomb down, like it specifically at A, because it's a little bit harder to defend, where do you set up to sit on bombs? So, all right, we're going through all that today. So, if you guys want to see this as a series, just Drop all your comments down below, like the video, support it. So then we'll be going through all of the maps and making this a little bit of a series. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go. So let's just go through this graphic real quick before we even talk about the strats. So when it comes to the graphic, you see the green dots are your teammates, all right? And then the white arrows are the lines of sight that you're probably going to be watching when you're sitting in this position and the best way to kind of set up. The lines of sight are pretty important. The green arrows basically means, well, if they're not going B and they're going A, this is where you might want to start pushing to, to, to kind of get some pressure on that bomb and play together as a team to collapse on the other bomb. And then, of course, the red dots are where enemies, you know, probably will be or very likely will be in a setup like this. Obviously, on Gunrunner, usually the biggest problem is the B bomb because teams can rush up to it pretty quick. Even if you're defensively throwing stuns and trying to slow down their rush, it can be pretty hard to defend sometimes considering how it's sitting right underneath the blue crates. And so the so really on defensive focuses, figuring out how to get angles to get them off bomb, prevent them from planning, prevent them from getting there. And so the first setup here that you're seeing is a pretty basic default gun runner setup. I thought it'd be nice to start off with a pretty simple one. And also when it comes to each setup, I'm not gonna talk specifically too much about every single position because you guys are obviously seeing it i'm just gonna talk about some of the themes of each of these setups and how they're used most effectively so the biggest way how this setup can break down is when the offensive team like double nades top blue top blue is the crates above b bomb they kill them off of that power position it allows for them usually to push up pretty easily get some control, have some nice angles. And that's usually how it goes down first for the setup to break down. The other one is where maybe they smoke mid. The, the, another scenario is where it, it can, another scenario where it could potentially break down is if they smoke mid or they rush through pipes and they try to get an angle on the guy in water or the guy in bathroom. And a lot of times that's what can go wrong is they try to rush mid and then those guys get caught in some bad timing. And that's how that can quickly break down in that scenario so you have to be aware of that and i think when the smokes come in is when you really have to communicate the most and just to make sure that you're covering all those angles in those situations where the smokes are coming in and it's getting pretty chaotic all right so the next setup involves smokes snades and stun so as you guys can see here this is more of like a rush to b type thing through mid this is pretty common with dead silence you throw a smoke into mid you hit it with dead silence and rush straight through it it can be really effective and a lot of times can catch teams off guard make some plays, switch things up, make them scared, get them on their heels. It's important to smoke in front of half wall there in mid, and then you rush through in the B with dead silence. You nade back behind half wall as well, and then you stun back behind green because you're trying to get a call out for the guy who's rushing through green that potentially somebody might be there, you know, trying to figure out where the hostiles are at that point. That's why the communication is so important as the guy's running through green and half wall, and then the guys back behind B, and then the guys back behind B can really try to make a play if your teammate's effectively pushing through green and getting map control. This is personally probably my favorite setup on this map because I love how you play A here. You just have one guy sitting on the lift watching the cross to A and trying to get call outs for them to cross to A. If they cross to A, then you're rotating back and trying to control that A side. And I just really, really like how that plays overall. It allows for your team to really focus on one side of the map. And if they rush towards A, you're getting that call out and rotating back through. And I think it's usually a pretty safe rotation in that sense. So I really, really like this setup a lot. It's worked really effectively for us as a team playing through GBs. And I'm hoping it'll work well for you as well. So this next setup is also a pretty aggressive one as well. So this one involves rushing out towards outer generator with a smoke grenade while someone is rushing through green again with that smoke in mid. So this is involving two pre-nades, two smokes, and a flash, which means there's three guys on the side of the map. So two of them need to run smokes. One of them needs to run a flash. You run, you throw a nade back behind half wall. You throw a nade on the back side of green with that stun grenade. And this can be incredibly effective. The biggest thing with this one where it can potentially break down is if they rush through the smoke while you're rushing through the smoke. And that's definitely been a problem at points for us where if you're smoking, you got to smoke in spots where you're definitely watching that push because if you're flying through that smoke, they can fly through that smoke too. And it's definitely been a problem where they we just didn't see them push through. And then we get caught with some horrible timing on the guy like at B or something like that. And then we get caught in a bad situation with them in our spawn because of the smoke grenades. But 
if you're aware of that and you have that guy at top B kind of looking over that and making sure that no one's getting through, you have the guy back behind water watching A. You know, then you got your guy back in A watching that A push, being playing pretty conservatively. This is a really fun one if you're not exactly sure how they're going to play. A, a really fun first round strat as well where you can just kind of catch them off guard, rush. Obviously, it's better with dead silence. So maybe use it in round two, round three, catch them early on in the game with this. And I think it can work incredibly well. So those are three pretty easy defensive setups that allow for a lot of flexibility, which allow for a lot of flexibility. Again, what I really like about this map is that you can just kind of load up the B side and mid on defense and then rotate A after you get a call out that they're there. You really only have to send like one person towards A and then get that call out, play a little bit slower, rotate and make the kills happen. So with that said, we can move on to offensive setups. This is the first one to be here. So again, these pretty quick B plants are really effective. And if you have the right lines of sight, it can work a lot of the time, especially against teams that aren't really organized on gun runner. So it's a pretty basic set. If you got four guys pushing towards green or into, into the trees, up towards bomb, you got one guy chilling at the back of the map. Because once you get that bomb down, that guy at the back of the map is so deadly. He either has like a m4 with like with a little bit of a longer sight on it or a sniper either way works really really well and can be deadly once you get that bomb down it is so good so this setup does require a little bit of pre-nade action and a smoke grenade double nade back behind b because a lot of times you can you know get that pick back there or get a hit marker on them get some information at least that somebody's back there then maybe throw that stun as well and then you smoke in their pipes the biggest problem when you're trying to rush to b is someone pushing through pipes or pushing through water and getting an angle on the guy who's planting the bomb so as long as you have somebody watching that side and you've got that smoke down for cover you're going to get this bomb down a majority of the time so if you have that covered then your other biggest worry would be somebody sprinting around the edge of containers and trying to kill the guy off bomb while he's planting but that's why the guy at generator is watching that so that you can get bombed down quick once that bomb's down he can back up behind rock or something and this is an easy dub of a round basically free wins so the next one's a little bit more of an aggressive B push with a repositioning of the flank. So you leave one guy backside Cole just to chill there, watch flank. This is pretty nice if you've gone B a few times and now they're trying to switch things up, get aggressive on the flank. I think it's usually nice to lay someone back there just to watch that flank, take care of things in the back while the rest of your team pushes up. So as you guys are seeing here, you smoke water. This is like a dead silence play. So you smoke like the front of water slash the edge of bathrooms and you dead silence through mid straight towards back blue. This is really effective. I don't think a lot of teams often check it. Obviously, if they get top blue quick enough, maybe if they have double time on, you might get caught in the open here, but that's why your teammates are hopefully there to get your trades. You rush one up to bomb, you have one outer generator, and then you fly one straight into back blue as after you have naded it and stunned it. And this one has worked really, really well for us in a lot of different situations. And overall, I really believe in this one. I think it works really, really well. And if you coordinate it well, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to stop. The biggest problem with this one is if they're trying to be aggressive at the same time. If they're trying to rush out of bathrooms or blue or outer generator as well, like that's when you'll get into some problems. It'll become a chaotic round really quick. So that's the only worry you really have to have. So if that guy at generator is playing pretty conservatively slow and he gets there in time, then you're going to be in pretty good shape to win the round. So the next one is just an A push. The A push is, is a little bit harder to be creative on the A pushes because you're kind of funneled in through coal and through rails. Basically how you do this is you hit the outer, you throw the smokes down back behind water on half wall and back on tracks behind the A bomb a little bit there. And then you're stunning back behind the rails in the back because sometimes they can beat you there and can really mess things up if they actually do beat you there. We've had a lot of success with this one. We like going A early on in the game to kind of throw things off, throw off the rhythm of the other team because most teams don't generally expect an A push off the rip. So if you get those smokes and those nades down, you're gonna be in good shape. Basically the only way that people would generally kill you while you're planning is if they push through water and they fly up through that smoke and try to check bomb. That can be the only problem. So be aware of that. And that's why the guy in rails has to be really watching that and guarding the guy on bomb. And if you do that, you're gonna be in really, really good shape to win the round. So these last two topics right here are just easy bomb down setup. So once you get the bomb down at A, it can be a little bit difficult to know how to set this up because they can come from a lot of different angles. And so just to kind of keep things a little bit simpler, here are a few ideas. So the first one is pretty simple. The biggest thing once you get bombed down is they can come from the flank, they can hit through pipes, they can hit through office, they can hit through warehouse, they can go through trains. And so you just have to be to watch all of those things. And it comes down to communication. Generally, I mean, at the end of the day, only one person would likely be on the flank 
and for the most part they're going to come through water offices or train tracks and that's where the communication really comes into play usually one will head back warehouse and so that's why the guy is at the back of the map there just chilling watching all of those angles and he's watching in the back of warehouse watching inside a warehouse top warehouse top ac and a little bit towards tracks as well that's a really effective spot back there and then you got one on and the rest of the guys are communicating what angles they're watching and this is kind of a good idea of how to set that up and play that out so here's another variation this one's a little bit more interesting i kind of like this one a lot because plant that bomb on the far side of a bomb and then you push out into their spawn you have one top ac you have one bottom ac one back trains one still on the staircase one watching the staircase's flank and you're in really really good shape if, they, if you get this bomb down and you're set up like this i think you are a hundred percent good to go with winning this round as long as you win the gunfights that you should so i hope you guys enjoyed the first video I put a lot of time into this and just trying to set this up, making the Photoshop file and everything else to make these graphics. And again, if you guys want to see the series for all the maps, comment below, like the video, and hopefully we can make that happen pretty quick here. So again, guys, as always, I'm your voice of Asia's lead. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time. I'm out.